and you buy his truckload of Tupitambo from him at uh, $3 a pound. And when he goes in the market, he finds that he could have gotten $4 a pound. Market price, wholesale price, was 4 He knew that. You did not. He met you outside the market and he exploited your ignorance of the market price. It was a transaction based on deception which yielded a profit or a gain greater than that to which he was justly entitled. Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam said that is riba. They call it today usury. The Americans have a very pretty expression for that transaction. They call it a rip-off. A rip-off is riba. When an economy is based on riba, whether the first or the second kind, then as we said, wealth no longer circulates through that economy. The rich remain permanently rich, the poor permanently poor. The masses plant, but the rich would reap. Not all the rich, of course. There are those who are wealthy, but they got their wealth halal, kosher. The, the poor would plant, but the rich would reap. The fruit of their labor, their sweat, their tears, their blood suckers who suck the blood of the masses until they are helpless to resist slavery. Even the physical body of the slave is now the property of the slave master. And the physical body, male or female, can be used by the slave master to fulfill his design. And so, the messenger of Allah said of that slavery, he said, now listen carefully. You won't, un you won't understand this until we give the lecture on... Uh, spiritual revolution in Islam. He said that a slave woman would give birth to her mistress. In this lecture, let us concentrate on the second form of riba. Transactions based on deception which rip off people, which yield profits and gains to which one is not justly entitled. The biggest rip-off of all, since Nabi Adam alayhi salam put foot on earth, is the rip-off which is now taking place in the world of money. There are some of you who already understand the subject. But there are many who do not. What is money? It is that with which we buy and sell. What are the functions of money? Number one, to be a medium of exchange for buying and selling. Barter has its limitations. Huh? I need a haircut. And my wife says to me, Imran, I'm tired cutting your hair. Why don't you go to the barber? So I went to the barber. And he cut my hair. I have to pay him. <laughs> so I offered him a copy of my book, Prohibition of Riba, in the Quran and Sunnah. The, the barber is looking very embarrassed. He says, 
uh, Sheikh, I don't know how to say this thing, but I'm not interested in reading your book. <laughs> so, <laughs> Bata has his limitations. What I need to pay him is something called money. That he can then use to go in the market and buy some zaboka. Up in West Borings they call it avocado. Huh? And the fellow who sold the zaboka can use it to buy a copy of my book. In other words, the first function of money is to be a medium of exchange for buying and selling. But how much should I pay for the haircut? And how much should he pay for the zaboka? And how much should you pay for the book? In other words, how do we measure value? What is the unit with which we will assign value? Money has this second function, to be a measure of value. Well, yes, the haircut would be $25. The zaboka would be, if it's big, $4, if small, $3. And the book would be $40. But money has a third function that the IMF and the World Bank and Washington and the Jewish bunny lenders of the world don't want you to know about. What is the third function of money? It is to be a store of value. If my grandfather died and left some money for me and I was a baby, and they put the money away for me. And with this money, I could buy a hundred camels. Huh? I would only get the money when I'm 21. That's what Grandpa said. So I have to wait until 21 to get the money. But provided the demand and supply for camels in the market remain constant. When I'm 21 and you give me my money, I should be able to buy the 100 camels. In other words, that money should have stored its value faithfully for 21 years. But if the money leak in, by the time I reach age 21, everything will be caught already. Can I use that as money? Can we? No. So these are the three functions of money. To be a medium of exchange, to be a measure of value, to be a store of value. When Allah created us to buy and sell, did Allah create that which was to be used as money? That is my question. Is there money in the book of Allah? Is there money in the Sunnah? The way of the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam. He said, didn't he, I leave behind me two things. So long as you hold on to them, you will never go astray. The book of Allah and my sunnah, not the Guardian and Express. The book of Allah and my sunnah. Is there money in the book of Allah and is there money in the sunnah? Now we come to a very interesting part of the lecture. Listen to this story. Bilal radiallahu ta'ala anhu the companion of the Prophet he came to him one day with a basket of dates dates were sold in small baskets and he offered some dates to the messenger of Allah Prophet Muhammad looked at the dates he said Bilal these are very fine quality dates where did you get them? Bilal, radiallahu ta'ala who said, O Messenger of Allah, I had two baskets of...